and uh, I hope it would be interesting for uh, some of you who are uh, interested in uh, how these new power technologies or new modular reactors or generation four reactors are going on. So please uh, enjoy and then take the best out of this. Mr. Monty, please. Thank you very much. Should I use yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, no, okay. So good afternoon, everybody, and have a good siesta with the water cooled reactor. I think that it was it was good to uh, I mean to have this uh, sequence of more first the water cooled reactor and then the advanced one because water cooled reactors are so boring. I mean we know that since ever. <laughs> so <laughs> you can enjoy your siesta during this present. So I will try to, to make it a little bit more. Uh, and actually Yash uh, told me that there were some complaint about my presentation yesterday, which was just an overview of the evolution of nuclear uh, power, uh, is not as an excusation non petita, as we say in Latin. Uh, but uh, of course, in one hour, it's impossible to go into the uh, details of the, of the uh, different uh, technology of the evolution. And, um, and in any case, you are supposed to be manager, not really a specialist of the different uh, so, of course, uh, our presentation are really, let's say, um, designed uh, on the basis to, to give general uh, concept and, the, and the information on the different uh, uh, nuclear technology, more than to, of course, uh, go into the detail of the single uh, you know, system, component, uh, performance, and so on and so forth. However, in order to, uh, uh, we have uh, some, uh, let's say, a uh, way to address uh, this uh, need, uh, which may arise from, from some of you. And uh, personally, I have, I have three. Uh, the first one is that uh, um, uh, my, 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 uh, my task is to present the current technology and the uh, future, the one I mean, under development, the design, etc., etc. So yesterday, I provided you with the uh, link to the PRIS uh, uh, system, which provides uh, very detailed information on, on the current uh, uh, nuclear, reactor, nuclear power plant, nuclear power plant uh, under operation. Um, from my section, I can offer this database, uh, which is a, a, a living database uh, updated on a regular basis. And which contains detailed information on all the what we call at the at the agency advanced uh, nuclear power plant. And with advanced, as clarified yesterday in IEA terminology, we uh, encompass the evolutionary design like IP1000, EPR, ATME, and so on and so forth. The one which are which have started the operation of first of a kind or are still uh, in in uh, under licensing or construction, etc the so-called Gen 3, 3 plus reactor. Then it also includes the SMR and, and also some innovative uh, reactors, which means generation for uh, uh, reactors. Um, uh, 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 a couple of, uh, I mean, uh, I have to say, uh, information about this database. Uh, on one side, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the information are uh, very reliable because as the one delivered by the vendors, okay? So we don't invent something, we don't interpret something that we know. It's really provided by the vendors. Uh, the agency only apply, of course, uh, his, uh, I mean, approach uh, that, of course, uh, this, uh, this uh, information cannot be, cannot promote the technology itself, okay? We are technology neutral uh, at the agency. So our role is to maintain the, the data, to, to, of course, to gather the information, to uh, uh, provide the, the information in a systematic uh, way, to eliminate all, all the promotional materials that you may, we may receive from the vendors, and then to post the, the information in a systematic way, because of course, as usual, is a database, you can Google play a little bit with the different uh, I mean, statistics, uh, et cetera. So the added value is that our reliable information coming from the vendors. Uh, well, what is the drawback? Is that, of course, uh, when the vendors are not willing to provide the information, we don't have any information. So it doesn't mean that uh, this uh, database cover all the possible uh, advanced uh, reactors, uh, again, under design, construction, uh, development, or, or uh, I mean, even conceptual phase. 
for instance, uh, since the, data, the database also has some requirement, okay, when we want, when there is a chapter devoted to the safety systems, okay, it's not enough to say, okay, we have uh, an, a PCCS. Okay, can, can, you, can, can I see the, I mean, you have to provide the real uh, information regarding uh, the passive uh, containment cooler system. Uh, what is your particular design of a PCCS, okay? So sometimes when we talk about innovative uh, reactors, so this information simply is not available because the design is still developing the, 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 uh, the reactor. This is why, for instance, some concepts are not really even, even uh, 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 um, included in this database, okay? So this is the, the first way in which we can address the need of more detailed information which come from, from the audience. The other point is that, okay, today maybe we go a little bit more in the details, but for sure we don't have in one hour, it's impossible uh, again to go into the details of the water cooled the reactor technology. Uh, so for instance, I will talk about active and passive system from the conceptual uh, viewpoint, okay? But I will not have any uh, time to show the different passive safety system which are under uh, consideration or also already implemented in some concept like uh, AP1000, which means that if you have uh, this interest, you can uh, ask me during the presentation, but better maybe even to talk during the break, etc. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true, but again, we cannot invent anything. We are aware, we have a, a rotation policy even in my section. Since here are contained uh, information on all the type of reactor in terms of water, uh, light water reactor, heavy water reactor, SMR, uh, fast reactor, gas cool reactor, and molten salt reactor. I have a project office, project manager for each of these uh, technologies, okay? so. Every three, four months, we have a rotation, and the process office is requested to update the database. But it cannot invent the information. So what can do? OK, look at the information. We know that there were some changes. So I'm going to contact the vendor, or the designer, and say, oh, we know that is not up to date. Can you give me uh, updated information? If he, she replies, we can do it. We cannot, in I, I repeat myself, we cannot uh, generate our own interpretation of the technology. Okay. It is the added value of the of the database is that is how to say certified uh, uh, information from the designer and the vendors. So if it's not up to date, it's not because of us, but because of the vendors, which is not providing the information. Maybe we can find the mechanism in which we put a warning. I mean, I mean, of course, I mean, up, uh, updated. At, I mean, as of 2011. Okay. Okay. So now. Um, uh, I will try to cover all this uh, topic. Uh, again, common features of current. Which, uh, here I will be very I mean, basic okay, on the different uh, uh, water cooled reactor technology. A few words again on the evolutionary uh, water cooled uh, reactor, or so called advanced large water cooled reactor. At least I will show something concerning uh, the specific SMR of, uh, like what, of water cooled reactor type, which are I mean, the so-called integral pressurized water-cooled uh, reactor. Then supercritical water, some slide on supercritical water-cooled reactor. And then, uh, well, maybe the, the question of Fukushima will be addressed uh, during the way when, when we talk of the specific uh, uh, safety system. OK, so it means that if we are going to talk about water-cooled reactor, actually, we are going to touch all the generation because we had the water-cooled reactor in the first generation. In the second generation, we have seen that more than 90% of the current fleet is composed of a water-cooled reactor. And then this is also the case for Gen 3 plus reactor, which are evolutionary reactor. I mean, most of them, as we have seen through the, the graph of the reactor under consideration, are, again, water-cooled reactor. And we have also a specific case for than for reactors, because even here, we have a supercritical water-cooled reactor, which is a particular uh, water-cooled reactor with a kind of combination of a BWR and PWR. So it means that, uh, as said, water-cooled reactors will re will are 
the, I mean, ba the basis of the nuclear power plant uh, currently uh, in operation worldwide and will represent uh, a large, uh, the, in my view, the major uh, part of the nuclear power plant in operation also in the decades ahead. And also, we have also, I mean, concept for the, 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 the very future, like the supercritical water for the reactor. So this is true also if we look at uh, not the GIF uh, uh, classification, but the IEA classification. I put in red uh, the, the, uh, the water-cooled uh, reactor. And as you can see, I mean, uh, all the evolutionary water-cooled reactor, most of the SMR are, are again, uh, IPWR, so water-cooled reactor technology, and innovative the SCR. Please also consider that when we talk about uh, uh, non-electric applications that we didn't have time yesterday to, to talk about. Uh, they say, oh, this is a, like a wishful thinking, and there is a, no real deployment of non-electric application uh, with nuclear power plants. Okay. Well, it's partially true, because do, do you know that there, there were already 70 nuclear power plants, including a fast reactor used for desalination. Okay? So of course, there is already deployment of non-electric application of nuclear power. Of course, since, I mean, again, it's related to the fact that most of the, of the available nuclear power plant are light water reactors. So the temperature is what we know. I mean, it's less than the output temperature is less than 300 um, degrees C. And of course, uh, you have a limited uh, a, a, a application, non-electrical application, because of the, of, the, of the output temperature that you have. But the potential is very high, as uh, we know. So we have some. Uh, application of non-electrical application of nuclear power, let's say at relatively low temperature, with an expectation of really to open this uh, kind of Pandora box in the future when, I mean, uh, high temperature reactor will be available for commercial use. And first of all, of course, the gas cool reactor. Here, I want also to, to stress one point. When we talk about, even today, we, we talk about the uh, <coughs> contribution of nuclear power to uh, climate change uh, mitigation. Well, we have to be honest, OK? As I said, uh, I mean, nuclear power is contributed to 11% of the electricity production worldwide. Actually, it was a 17% before Fukushima. So there is a clear uh, uh, decrease in the electricity production. And a mere less than 5% of the overall private energy uh, source uh, consumption. So when we talk about uh, the use of nuclear power for ele uh, electricity purposes, uh, to produce electricity, I mean, it's difficult to see really breakthrough in the contribution of the climate change mitigation. This is also true for uh, when we, we talk about uh, deployment of SMR. They are small, and if they are small, contribution is small also to the uh, possible CO2 uh, reduction. But when we talk about a non-electric application, which means, uh, to do, first of all, not only to address the 35% the, the 30, of electricity production, but also the, the whole package, then things can be very different. Okay? So actually, there is a big expectation in contribution, at least potential. Then, of course, there are political, the usual thing, political sake. But if we really I mean, uh, favor the application of non-electric application of nuclear power, then the contribution of nuclear power to the low carbon uh, uh, energy production can be really very important, even in the order of 20-25%. Uh, uh, Nowadays, it represents the 30% of the low carbon electricity production. It's significant, but of course, is limited to the fact that there is a, a limited deployment. OK, so the situation okay, is also, I mean, the, the situation that, that, that the, the market now and in the future is dominated by, light, by a water-cooled reactor is also shown by these two graphs that we have seen also yesterday. OK, so basic feature, well, let, let me just uh, at least to be on the same page about uh, the current uh, technology, OK? So pressurized water-cooled uh, reactor, most common thermal uh, reactor. The moderator is, is uh, light water, which has, uh, as you know, a very important uh, safety feature. Okay? So the reactivity coefficient, reactivity coefficient 
we know what is that more or less, okay? Is negative, so what does it mean in practical uh, terms? It means that whenever the temperature increase, uh, which you should bring in principle to a, I mean, uh, a situation to be controlled, the water expand, and so of course uh, the middle moderation of the, uh, the the power of the of the of the water decreases, and the power decreases. So it means that the feedback is negative. Okay, so if it's negative, it's very beneficial because if the re if the for any reason for any transient the the, the reactor tends to to run up, okay? There is a, a natural mechanism without any intervention from the operator. It's an intrinsic safety feature of light water reactor that the, the water is the moderator. The water expands. There is a less neutron slowing down, so less fission, and the reactivity decreases. So it's a beneficial natural uh, 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 f uh, characteristic of, uh, of light water uh, reactor. Uh, the coolant, uh, in this case, of course, is uh, light water at uh, 15.5 megapascal and remains liquid also uh, at high temperature. So we have the, the typical two loop with a primary uh, system with li liquid and then a steam generator uh, feeding the turbine and, gener uh, and, and the generator and so on and so forth. There are other cases. Uh, another case of PWR is the VVR, uh, the uh, PWR uh, Russian in interpretation, uh, which is very similar in the design with respect to a typical PWR. The main features, uh, for their for very even economic reason, is that they have adopted uh, a steam generator, which is one of the main components of any plant, horizontal in an horizontal layout instead of a, of a vertical. This is basically. The, the, the main difference with respect to the classical PWR, and also the fact that uh, for some application they can also use, uh, I mean, a little bit higher risk of the uranium up to 4.4, even to further burn up, etc. Okay, and then there is the boiling water reactor, which is uh, the other uh, most uh, deployed uh, water-cooled uh, uh, um, technology in which we have a direct uh, cycle. So the, uh, I mean, of course, the water uh, is not only liquid, it's liquid plus, plus uh, uh, vapor in the primary system. And so we feed uh, uh, directly the uh, turbine and uh, generator. And uh, of course, there are some uh, uh, benefits as for the economic, from the economical viewpoint, uh, less material per, per uh, kilowatt with respect to PWR. Uh, the, the, the water is a, both the coolant and the moderator, and the water is at a low pressure, seven, typically 7.6 megapascal, um, and it boils in the core, okay, with the some, of course, implication from the safety uh, viewpoint, as you can imagine, because, of course, it means that, the, for instance, the, the reactivity along the, the, uh, the, uh, the power channel is not homogeneous, okay? We have, a, I mean, a continuous in the, uh, in the uh, variation of the, re of the neutronic reactivity along the, uh, the channels. And then we have the, the other option, uh, in particular adopted in, in Canada and India, of the uh, pressurized heavy water uh, reactor. Uh, well, the, the reason for developing this reactor was very clear. It was the fact that uh, they wanted to not to enrich, uh, there are also, of course, uh, uh, a reason from the uh, suffragability viewpoint, because it's a reactor which doesn't require enrichment of the fuel, but requires enrichment of the of the of the coolant, of better of the moderator, because as you know, it's not possible to design a reactor which merges a natural uranium for, with light water. Okay, why not? Because light water is a very good uh, moderator, but also absorb uh, hydrogen, the hydrogen in the water, absorb neutrons. So the economy of a uh, light water uh, moderated reactor with, the, with, the, with the, uh, uranium, with the natural uranium will be too poor, okay? It's not enough to have a critical reactor. So if you wanted to use uranium, natural uranium, 0 0.7 of uranium-35, you are obliged to enrich the water. By what? By using Deuterium, which is a perfect moderator, because it slows down very well the neutrons, but doesn't absorb the neutrons. So the neutrons are still available for the uh, criticality of the of the system. 
The other main feature is that they are not using a, a pressure vessel, vessel, big pressure vessel, but they are using these pressure tubes which contain the, the, the fuel elements. And this uh, uh, layout in particular allows the possibility to refueling the, uh, the reactor even under operation, which of course benefit on the loading factor of the, of the reactor. So uh, Kandu are very well known for uh, 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 having a very high uh, loading factor, for the, in particular for this uh, reason. And they are also very well known because using uh, natural uranium, of course, uh, there is a significant conversion factor, the one that we have introduced uh, the last lecture. Okay? Conversion factor, it means that it generates uh, some plutonium. Okay, what are the differences in terms of the main parameter? Uh, this is important to know, even from the safety consideration viewpoint. There is a PWR, okay? having for the reason that is uh, more compact because of the reason of water only in liquid state, has a power density of the order of 100 megawatt per cubic uh, meter. While a typical BWR actually is a, a BWR, so it's a little bit higher than normal, is in the order of 50, just uh, half of that. Uh, if you consider, well, if you consider SMR, okay, Again, uh, there are also safety reasons uh, uh, for that. Uh, the IPWR, actually, they have uh, a, a power density which is just in between. It's in the order of 60, 62 uh, uh, megawatt per, per uh, cubic meter. And very low for heavy water reactor because, of course, they are very large. Using uh, uh, natural uranium, they are big, big core. Also, the fuel is pretty different. It's a different uh, concept. This is the, uh, the uh, assembly, the uh, fuel assembly for a typical PWR, BDR, BWR, and PHWR. What to say about the, uh, the, uh, the water? Well, we have, said, we have said that, of course, water is used both as a, as a coolant and a moderator. And of course, we know very well how to manage uh, water. Water was used as, as a coolant uh, since uh, I mean, thousands of, of uh, uh, years. And we know that, uh, I mean, the, the, the reactivity control of the, of the reactor is very good, both because of there is a large fraction of delayed uh, neutrons. So the, 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 the period of the reactor is, is, very, is very good and, and easy to control. And the fact is that the, 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 the uh, reactivity co coefficient of the coolant is negative for the reason that we have explained before. The drawback is that we have to operate, of course, at the high uh, pressure in order to have, uh, well, first of all, in a PWR to keep the, the, uh, the water in liquid condition, but also, of course, to increase the enthalpy eh, of, the, of, the, of the coolant, primary or secondary, depending if it's a BWR or a PWR. And, of course, for that, we need, uh, uh, I mean, uh, high pressure to have high energy content, and so a significant, a reasonable efficiency of the system. Of course, the fact is that the pressure, uh, the, 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 uh, the, uh, the vessel is under pressure. We will see the numbers in, 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 a, in a second. Of course, uh, has uh, some consequences also from the safety viewpoint. And in case of Locke, you know that the point is that we are going to pressurize also the containment. And here we have, for instance, the case of uh, Fukushima, very well known in which there was a question of uh, how to deal with the uh, overpressure in the containment, venting, non-venting, and all these things so that uh, we have debated uh, deeply, in particular also the ISIS in the last five, six years. OK, at least to have some uh, technology basis uh, on this uh, reactor. I don't know if you know this uh, very well known phase diagram of water. Let's see. The operation, I mean, the, the, the thermodynamic uh, uh, condition in a PWR and a BWR, this is the, uh, the so called the saturation line. So, of course, in a PWR, uh, in the primary system, you operate at the left side of the saturation line. So, you have a more, a more, uh, a more or less 15 megapascal, and uh, you reach uh, this temper of uh, even 3 to 4 degrees C. Okay, in the secondary uh, system, after the exchange of heat with the steam generator, in a PWR, you operate, of course, up to the saturation line. 
So and, uh, it's operated at 6.9 megapascal and with the uh, uh, output temperature of the vapor to the turbine, which is in the order, is less than a 300 degrees C. And then, of course, after that, you have the condenser at this operational condition, okay? In the case of a BWR, you are more or less in between. Of course, you are already, even in the primary system, you are already on the saturation line because you have the coexistence of liquid and vapor, or better, steam. And then I will, what is the difference between vapor and steam? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so uh, we work at this, uh, at this uh, condition, which are very similar, if you can see, uh, this condition, which are very similar to the secondary loop of a PWR. So you know very well, I hope, uh, that Carnot is not is someone uh, I mean, known even in this context, that uh, the efficiency of the system is the difference between uh, the enthalpy at high temperature and, and, and what I do at the level of the condenser. Okay? So since uh, this jump is similar for the secondary loop of a PWR and for the BWR, as a consequence, also the efficiency of the system is very similar between a PWR and BWR, and in particular is in the order of 30, 33 percent. Okay? We cannot uh, go beyond because of this uh, uh, limitation in pressure because of technological uh, reason, which we tried to overcome with the introduction of the supercritical water-cooled reactors that is supposed to operate at, uh, I mean, supercritical condition of water. So in this case, you achieve also 500, uh, supposed to achieve also 500 degrees C, uh, uh, I mean, of the, of the steam to the turbine. So assuring a much higher uh, uh, efficiency of the order also of 40%. Of course, we have to pay something off, which is the problem, for instance, of the stability of the system. Yes, uh, the, the main problem of SCVR are two main problems. The problem of corrosion, which of course increases with the, with the uh, temperature. And the other problem is, of course, the instability, because of the, the supercritical regi regime is very unstable. So it's something, of course, since the nuclear power plant is all interconnected, of course, this gives in instability also from the reactivity viewpoint. Okay? So it's tricky even to be, to be uh, uh, operate, operated in a safe uh, mode just because of this uh, thermodynamic instability uh, coming from the operational regime. There is some, I, I, I think that we are at the basic level, but, but if something is not clear or you have uh, additional comments, you're, please. The what? Thorium, thorium. Ah, okay, well, using thorium, okay, using thorium, yes. Well, because uh, at the moment there is no water cooled react. Of course, it's an option. Okay, but there is no water cooled. I mean, there are heavy water cooled uh, reactor. Uh, there is the case of of uh, India. Okay, but if you consider the, the fleet, uh, the the fleet uh, all, all over the world, thorium has been still to be really introduced in the in the uh, overall uh, scheme. And the main reason is that uh, is the fuel cycle. Okay, there are also still problems in qualifying thorium-based uh, fuel, and there are, of course, irradiation program both in Europe and in India to qualify this uh, uh, thorium at all at all the operational conditions. But the main issue is the fact that, uh, I mean, for historical reason, the world has very well developed the uranium-plutonium uh, uh, cycle but we don't have a consolidated uranium thorium cycle, even if there were many experimental activities in the decades, including my country. Italy was also uh, uh, reprocessing uranium thorium fuel from, uh, from a reactor in the US. So of course, uh, there is a very limited deployment of the fuel cycle. So there are still problem of fuel qualification under all the operational uh, uh, condition. And, and in particular, we don't have a uranium thorium fuel cycle available, okay? So this is another point that, okay, uranium thorium is uh, the usual beautiful girl that one day will deliver, but uh, I mean, it's still there. Why? For mostly for industrial and, 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 and really commercial reason, more than for technological reason. I mean, I have also to say that this question of, of thorium is considered a kind of, 
I mean, Graal of nuclear power. Nuclear power will develop only if. Well, there are drawbacks also in the use of thorium. Okay, of course there are big advantages. The fact is that, of course, you, by, by nature you, you produce a less uh, high-level waste than than with with the use of uranium plutonium. But for instance, uh, there is a problem uh, to manage uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, um, the waste because of the uranium 34. Is 34 or 32? I don't remember. No, the 33 is the fertile, uh, the fertile. But there is an isotope, which is, I think, uranium-34, which is a big gamma emitter. OK? Uh, it's 32, uh, of course. Uh, let's see. Well, it's the other one. <laughs> 32. Uh, OK, it's a, it's a big emitter. So there is a big impact uh, on the uh, fuel cycle. It's good from one side, because, of course, uh, is, I mean, from proliferation viewpoint, uh, is interesting because, of course, having a big emitter, uh, you, you discourage uh, potential uh, distraction of this uh, this fuel. But it poses a lot of uh, problem. Uh, of course, uh, for instance, you you, you cannot uh, manage the, in a in a globe ba box of this fuel. Okay, you need a hot cell every time. You need a hot cell. Okay, it's like the case of a curium uh, that people dream to to manage curium in order to reduce uh, the impact on the geological repository. It's a wishful thinking because, I mean, curium uh, is an, a big uh, uh, neutron emitter. Okay? It's a problem that we have uh, in, uh, in, in uh, proposing uh, the burning of curium in the fast reactors. Because being a big uh, uh, new, uh, neutronic emitter, of course, uh, there is a big impact on the back end. Okay? So these are things are not to be underestimated. Because when we, we think that, for instance, instead of a, Glob box, I need a hot cell. There are millions and millions of euros of difference, plus, of course, the operation, which is much more complicated. Okay? So these things should not be underestimated. Both the agency, the IEA, and the OECD IEA, has produ uh, produced a very interesting uh, document on the use of thorium, also including the use of thorium in light water uh, reactor, which is under investigation also for evolutionary uh, reactor, in particular for EPR. And they think that there are, uh, let's say, I mean, reasonable uh, state of the art of the of the thorium and 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 the realistic overview of the pros and cons of the of the technology. Okay? So it's not the the new ground. There are there are problems. On top of that, uh, I mean, in this moment, it's a little bit uh, useless to talk about uh, thorium at least for early deployment because anyway, all the nuclear uh, fuel. Uh, industry is based on uranium uh, plutonium. So there are, I mean, the, the, the main barrier is really the state of the art, uh, <coughs> the state of deployment, uh, of, of consolidated deployment of the fuel and fuel cycle. Uh, okay, what are ah, another safety issue is that, uh, as any nuclear power plant, when, when, when we shut down uh, the reactor, uh, I mean, uh, we don't uh, uh, really shut down the heat production, we shut down the, fission, the nuclear fission chain, but not the uh, heat production. And so we have to remove decay heat. And, okay, and, and to remove uh, decay heat uh, means uh, when we talk about uh, reactors which have a, a, a electrical output of some 1,000 megawatt electrical, 33% of, uh, of efficiency, it means 3,000 uh, megawatt thermal. And we, if we say 3,000 megawatt thermal, it means that at the beginning of the shutdown, you have to remove 160 megawatt, which is another reactor. Okay? A small model reactor has that output. Okay? So at least when, when you shut down a large uh, reactor, you have to evacuate the heat equivalent to a small model reactor under operation. Okay? So of course, it's not an easy task. Normally, I mean historically, uh, this has been re uh, removed with uh, with uh, a decay heat system, which are electrically, uh, which are based on electrically driven uh, pumps, and this is, for instance, the case of uh, the uh, the uh, power decay in the case of uh, Fukushima. We have to remove this power. So I hope that here we are. Yes, here we are. How to do that? Okay. So we are talking about uh, the decay heat removal. In particular, under, I mean, operational, I mean, in, in, in situation which are not uh, normal. So basically and historically, we have two ways to do that, or also combination of the two ways. 
One is using active system, which means that our system, which are a, uh, based on electrically powered pumps, that they have electrically operated uh, valves that uh, are, of course, they re normally require an actuation by an operator. An operator should intervene, okay, and feed with electricity the valve of the pump. And also based on backup uh, diesel generators. So are all systems that require an AC or DC electrical feed. An alternative is to use a passive system. Okay, here, no, I mean, they are also uh, they are, are based on a natural phenomena. Here, I think that we have some example. For instance, based on natural circulation to difference of density. Go to give us, I mean, the wind are there because there are difference of density. So we create a difference of density in two part of the reactor. We we uh, favor the natural circulation and we. Uh, uh, evacuated the decay heat in this way. Or, or they are gravity de driven uh, system, or system which, again, uh, another physical phenomenon is condensation and evaporation. With condensation and evaporation, we also transfer heat, eh? very well known. And uh, for instance, they have uh, valves that fail in safe mode. So, for instance, valves that they, if, if there is no more. Uh, uh, electricity input, they remain open so that uh, they allow to feed water into the system in fail mode. Okay? These are all cases, and are not all of them here, regarding how to remove the decay heat from a, a, a reactor in an active or in a passive system. Please consider that uh, some reactor have adopted the logic which is based both on active and passive system okay if we wanted to 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 uh, to uh, 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 think about the two extreme case of evolutionary reactor okay epr the the areva epr is based is the logic is based on active system redundancy and diversification ap1000 is the other extreme case which is fully based on passive system above all as for the removal of the decay heat in emergency situation. Uh, when we talk about the passive uh, system, we always uh, have in mind the, the decay heat removal. Actually, there is a, another, very, you know what are the three main safety features that every uh, 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 reactor should uh, comply with. Uh, it means uh, the three function. Reactivity control, decay heat uh, removal, and containment of the radioactivity. Okay, so actually, this passive system addresses the second uh, requirements. Okay, because they are all for removing the decay heat. But please consider that uh, the most advanced uh, reactors now they also address the passive. Uh, uh, I mean, they also use the passive. Uh, uh, system to address the first point, the 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 the, the, reactivity, the control of reactivity, and normally the new design they also uh, uh, exploit the passive shutdown system, and these are uh, almost a normal practice now in the design of a fast reactor of a, of a fourth generation. Please. The IA doesn't give any indication on that. It's up to the designer to decide what are the. Uh, we establish requirements, okay, and then it's up to the designer to decide what the safety system have to be implemented in order to. I'm going to. Mm -hmm. 
Well, because also the passive safety system can fail. I mean, they, they are not reliable 100%. I can always find, a, 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 through PSA, probabilistic safety analysis, I mean, a tree which brings uh, to, for instance, uh, is something that uh, I've also told the, to the um, to the molten salt reactor guys that they are so excited because they, they can implement a lot of uh, passive uh, safety system with, the, with that concept of a, of a bulb which uh, melts and, and allows all the, oh, the molten salt to flow into some storage and, and evacuated the decay heat just for irradiation. I can for sure find the sequence in which that bulb should not melt. And it's risky to have that, that, that bulb melt. Okay. So this is a clear uh, example in which uh, a passive safety system can also be included in a potential Severe accident uh, scenario. My question is why most of the invasive or even social media. Because accord, even according to the PSA, the introduction of passive safety system, in particular, I mean, we can demonstrate that we can decrease the core damage frequency. Okay, if you look at the numbers, okay. The point is that when you say 10 to the minus 7, okay, against the 10 to the minus 5 or 10 to the minus 4, what is the uncertainty of that number? Okay? What are, you have to demonstrate in front of a regulator that the uncertainty are acceptable. But it means that, of course, uh, that the 10 to the minus 7 is not uh, a deterministic uh, number. But it's true that we can prove both deterministically and through uh, probabilistic safety assessment is that the passive system for sure decreases the probability of uh, severe accident, some of the most uh, demanding severe accident. But it doesn't uh, mean that since I have a uh, passive safety system, the safety case is, is closed. No, because you have even to, of course, uh, to demonstrate uh, that uh, the numbers are not affected by 200% of uh, uncertainty. But that's the point. So that some, some regulators uh, are very cautious from this point of view because of this, uh, of this reason, because of the uncertainty which affect the numbers coming from the use of passive safety system. But it doesn't diminish the, the role of passive system, okay? okay? The role is clear. And in particular, I mean, a Fukushima-like scenario would not have happened with the increases of passive safety system. Actually, they had a passive safety system. You know that uh, in, in, uh, in uh, the, uh, number, the reactor number one, they have a passive system, the isolation condenser. The, pr the problem is that at a certain moment for things which are related to the operation, the, 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 uh, the isolation condenser stopped to work. Okay? But they had actually a passive safety system because passive safety system were employed. I mean, for, for instance, the, 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 the containment spray uh, or the suppression uh, pool is an application of a passive uh, system. And there are reactors in operation which adopt uh, this uh, system since, uh, I mean, since long. Okay. Now, the tendency is to introduce at any level a okay, passive safety uh, system. And of course, even more developed, uh, like uh, with respect to the one implemented in the first uh, design. Uh, what is our guy? Uh, because here, I mean, we are very, very behind the schedule. So another uh, quick uh, question. Uh, very quick, uh, sorry, is not to interrupt. The system. The system that require greater action. Yes. Well, we know that in some designs, some active safety no, no, well, of course, no. Passive as another, uh, okay, it doesn't mean only, it means they are automatically activated, okay, but they need electricity. There, is, there should be some uh, AC or DC power from somewhere, okay? This is the, okay. the one. So it's a combination of these requirements, okay? But of course, in a, in a normal uh, reactor, even in EPR, there are safety systems which intervene without the operator in the but on the basis of an electrical input. Okay? This is not required in passive safety system. 
And even here, the question of the operator, well, again, depends on the design. Normally, this is true, no operation action, within a certain so-called grace time. At least in Europe, we call it a grace time. In, uh, in US, I don't, I don't remember how they call it. It means that you will have a certain period of time in which you can even abandon the reactor to itself. And you don't re need any intervention of the operator, even in very uh, uh, emergency case, even under uh, uh, accident, for a certain period. For instance, the AP1000, they have calculated with all of the uncertainty, blah, 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 that the grace time is at, at least 72 hours. And uh, under some circumstances, if the accumulator recharges, blah, 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 actually, this grace time should be infinite. But again, again, be careful, because this is true on the basis of the probabilistic safety analysis. Okay? And then, of course, there are uncertainty on that. But for sure, the adoption of, of passive safety system gives this possibility to the system to have a, a very uh, important grace time in which the operators can organize themselves in order then to intervene on the, on the uh, reactor. This is for sure the, I mean, one of the uh, main uh, advantages to adopt uh, passive uh, System. Okay, evolutionary, uh, just to, to uh, remember uh, what we have already uh, discussed. Uh, the, uh, so, I mean, for instance, uh, I mean, when we, uh, we talk of a passive safety system, normally we think, okay, is what has been adopted in a number of evolutionary uh, design. Um, on top of that, as we said yesterday, uh, most of these designs are also able to, uh, to burn uh, mixed uh, oxide, uranium plutonium oxide. Uh, they have also uh, uh, adopted, uh, I mean, for instance, increasing burn up, etc., a reduction in the waste, both because they, they may use MOX and also increasing the burn up. And so the consequences, for instance, on the, on the fuel cycle is that, uh, as you can see, for instance, that the fuel burn-up in an AP1000 is significantly higher than in an in a equivalent, uh, I mean, Gen2 uh, Westinghouse uh, uh, reactor. And in terms also of the fuel volume of irradiated heavy metal per gigawatt year of electricity generated, this is the trend, okay? So adopting a Gen 3 reactor for the reason that I explained hello, also somehow facilitate the waste management, the, I mean, the, the, in particular, the management of the uh, uh, most hazardous uh, uh, nuclides, so uh, the, the, the management of the high level waste. Not in a significant way like you can get from a fast reactor, but a, a way. In, 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 we have some improvement even from the waste management, management viewpoint. These are the reactors, uh, the evolutionary reactors, uh, uh, more or less available uh, nowadays, IP1000, ABWR, EPR, ACP1000 from China, BVR from Russia, APR1400 from North Korea. And this is, uh, I mean, uh, Pardon me? South Korea. <laughs> we don't know. Maybe they. <laughs> I'm sorry. South Korea. Um, and actually, I think, oh, we have a case here, which is not a South Korean uh, case, but is also not a North Korean case. It's a, it's a UA uh, case of the first uh, APR 1400 uh, uh, under construction. Actually, it, I mean, uh, Okay, they have some delay now with the, uh, with the commissioning and, uh, and uh, the fuel upload, uh, but they should, I mean, go critical, uh, let's say in one, two years, uh, should be put in operation. Uh, here is another slide which confirms that, okay, even, I mean, if you consider overall all the uh, uh, Luca Power Plant under construction uh, worldwide, I mean, uh, most of them are, of, evolutionary type, Gen 3, Gen 3 plus uh, a reactor, even if we know that uh, some projects uh, are experiencing some problems uh, to uh, US uh, um, AP1000, they have announced that, I mean, of course, it's related to, to the bankruptcy of uh, Westinghouse and plus other internal problems, 
that have decided to discontinue the project, at least at the moment. And also the other two invoked, uh, they are considering, uh, to reconsidering uh, to really uh, complete uh, the uh, construction of, uh, of the uh, reactor. Uh, the same is for the EPR. There are four reactors uh, under construction, but uh, we know that uh, they have, in, in particular, the one in Finland and in France, they have experienced a number of problems which are related uh, to the, the, the problem of the first of a kind. Okay, is a first of a kind, so it's normal to have problems, but that, I mean, the problems are particularly uh, demanding also for us a specific uh, uh, issue. For instance, the fact that with EPR, uh, for the, I mean, France was restarting constructing uh, uh, reactors after 20, 25 uh, years of the atlas. so of course uh, the, the, the industry was not really ready to do that. And on top of that, uh, uh, the, the, the reactor in all field water, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the, the, the EPC is Areva without EDF. Well, historically, I mean, the nuclear power plant in France, the, uh, the architectural engineering was EDF, it was not Areva. So, of course, uh, plus the fact that it was the first time that they were interacting with the known French uh, uh, nuclear regulators. Okay, so this very well known uh, delay and extra cost comes from very specific reasons which have been analyzed uh, recently. And uh, I mean, for people who may be interested, uh, the IEA is in the process to, un to, have a, to, to, to perform a comprehensive study on the lesson learned uh, from the uh, early, from the first, uh, uh, let, let's say from the, the, the construction of the first of a kind of evolutionary reactor. Both of the, the, the successful case and the less successful case, because we have successful case. For instance, the DDR in, 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 in Russia okay, is not really, I mean, it was a build on, on time and on, on but. So, please. Again, depends on where, because if I look at the case of the, of the same reactor being built in China or in US, the, the, the overall time of construction is very different. Or, or even a, a Gen 3 plus reactor like VDR 1200 in, in Russia. I mean, it's not mission impossible to respect uh, those. Of course, uh, they were demanding. Eh? And please also consider that we are talking about the first of the kind. Okay? So that number was considered for the nth of a kind. Okay. The first of a kind, it, it historically, have, has posed a problem, in particular during the construction, and also the need to modify the design during the feedback on the design. Okay. This is why we, we, we built the first of a kind, okay. to have this uh, return of, a, of, a, of experience. Okay. Then, I mean, if you want, during the break, we can. We, there are specific reasons now, pretty clear, why this project have experienced such a big delay and also, I mean, cost, which are two, three times than the one, the one uh, uh, forecasted. Um, of course, with 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 the big impact on on the nuclear industry, the very case of Areva and Westinghouse. The reason is obvious. You know that every year you delay the, the uh, connection to the grid, uh, you lose uh, half a billion for every year. So then you have the additional cost because you have modified something. Okay, so you have other co extra cost from the supply chain. Okay? But just the fact is that you don't connect the reactor to the grid because of this uh, perverse mechanism of the capital uh, uh, investment, uh, the very high uh, capital investment in the nuclear power, uh, power plant, the utility loses half a billion. Okay? So it means that when, I mean, the, the, the world has, is experiencing the fact that if you fail in, in the construction of a nuclear power plant, you can really jeopardize the whole enterprise. Okay. This is really, again, another point that from the financial viewpoint is extremely delicate. Okay. 
I have to, okay, when, when, when everything goes good, I have a big revenue, and I'm, I'm satisfied of my LCO, the way in which I can, I can sell uh, uh, electricity at an affordable uh, price. But when we say that is, this is economic, but then there is the financial risk, okay? I have to address both. The economy is not sufficient. I have to address the financial risk because only, only a few companies can afford the situation in which uh, if they fail in that project, also the, the, the company fails. It's a big risk. Okay, what should we do? You, you give me the time and I decide what to do with my slides because now I have uh, a very tedious uh, sequence of slides, which shows all the different evolutionary uh, reactors under construction, under licensing, and under operation. So it's uh, 20 slides which show all this uh, uh, reactor. If I don't, if I have time, I do it. If I don't, I, I skip that and go to, uh, to the SMR, in particular, to IPWR. Because the, the following lecture is, oh, no, is mm -hmm. but the following lecture will be three hours, not one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me give. Let, let's put. Uh, is it reasonable to say fifteen minutes? Okay, fifteen minutes. Please uh, switch off my my microphone. Okay, so I stop uh, talking. I talk always uh, too much, and uh, and then and then uh, we have a uh, twenty minutes of break instead of. Uh, okay. Okay, so it means that I'm sorry. I, uh, anyway, I mean, this is my, maybe is not the more appropriate uh, way to, uh, to to give lecture. But my approach is the following: for many reasons, even because uh, you are not homogeneous, there are different uh, uh, knowledge uh, here. I always uh, put more meat in my slides so that the person who is interested in the details, they, they can go through the slide on the basis of my lecture and learn a little bit more. Okay. So this is the, also the case of this uh, presentation, in which, as you can see, just going through very quickly, I put, I mean, information regarding all the evolutionary reactor under consideration, both of all three types. Eh? There are both pressurized water reactor, boiling water reactor, and also uh, pressurized heavy water reactor, because even in this case, there are two evolutionary design, one from Canada and the other one from India. But let's go to a more excite, exciting topic, which is PWR. Remembering what are the potential advantages of this SMR, which were also uh, reviewed this morning by Aliki, uh, better affordability. When we say better affordability, we say financial risk, OK? Because the, the economy hardly will compete with a large uh, water-cooled reactor because of the lack of economy of scale, okay? Economy of numbers, but we will see, okay? So when we say better affordability from the economic viewpoint is because of the lower upfront capital cost, which means also that uh, the, 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 the capital at risk is lower. Modularization is very uh, uh, important because it's related again to the economic, because it, it can, if there are mod modules, they are small, and so I can even uh, uh, realize this reactor in a workshop. Okay, they are work, um, they are they are uh, building in a workshop, and then transported on site. This can be done if and only if uh, the reactor is small. Okay, even the transportation is uh, the, the the power the maximum power of SMR normally is. Um, uh, fixed on the basis of the maximum vessel that the bargains can, can transport. Okay? okay? So the, the, some design were changed because uh, the power was that, that the vessel was to be, to be transported with available means. Okay? So transportability is, is fundamental to have then a uh, uh, shop fabricated uh, uh, reactor transported on site as module and as the demand arises. Flexible application, okay, very large. Uh, I mean, first of all, they can also couple with the, with the, I mean, co for co-generation and uh, for small grid, remote regions. Uh, 
smaller footprint. This is very important because it may have uh, an impact all, also on the emergency planning uh, zone. Okay, so it's another very important issue, even to, for the public acceptability of the of the of the uh, um, of the reactor. And in my view, is very well related to this uh, point uh, to be able to replace the aging fossil fire plants. I repeat what I said yesterday. This is possible, incredible, from a public uh, uh, perception viewpoint, acceptability viewpoint. If and only if, uh, due to the fact that uh, the, we have a small footprint, that we have also a reduced the source term. Uh, small, the source term is proportional. So, of course, uh, even the impact of a severe accident is expected to be lower than a, 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 a severe accident in a large reactor. This, all this consideration bring to the fact that there is room to reduce, if not eliminate, the emergency planning zone. And here is a very important conceptual point. You know that with the new uh, safety approach even promoted by the IEA, the level of, of defense are five, are not four. Okay? There is a fifth level of defense in depth, which is emergency preparedness and response. Okay? So it means that in any case, the operators and all the systems should be uh, uh, ready to face any kind of emergency situation, including a severe accident. The fact that there is an option with SMR, and also this has been also already clarified even for Gen4 reactors. The fact is that in principle, you can at least reduce the EPZ, if not also eliminate, okay? It depends very much on the interpretation of practical elimination of some uh, severe accident condition, okay? The fact is that we can really, in the future, eliminate the emergency planning zone is very much linked on the fact that you can exclude, practically exclude some scenario, okay? In such a case, with some concept, there is a room even to eliminate the EPZ. But the fact is that we eliminate the EPZ, since in any case will be based on probabilistic concept, okay? or a combination of probabilistic and deterministic uh, uh, analysis, doesn't mean that uh, someone will eliminate the fifth level of the defense in depth. It means that EPR, not the reactor, the emergency uh, 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 preparedness and, and readiness, to also to an extreme event should be in place anyway. Also for SMR, also for Gen4 uh, reactors. So in order to keep the five, the five level of defense in depth of any nuclear power plant. Another uh, question is the hybrid, the possibility to, to uh, as we say, I mean, integrate with the renewables also a little bit talk of that. Um, the, the SMR under consideration are of different uh, type. Uh, water-cooled reactor, gas-cooled reactor, and with metal-cooled reactor. Uh, in, first of all, since we are talking about water-cooled reactor, of course, we concentrate on, on that. But they are also the most credible to, for a near-term deployment. If we exclude the case of HTR PM, which is under construction in China, but this is a unique uh, case. All the other uh, cases which are considered for the near-term deployment are water-cooled reactor. Please. <laughs> well, because uh, renewables is a reality. <laughs> well, I can give my personal opinion. Okay. There is a technical uh, uh, evidence that uh, a nuclear power plant intrinsically, because of the technology, they work well at full power, okay? full nominal power. Okay? So whatever you can try to demonstrate, uh, the, way, the fact is that you are trying to, to use a, a reactor in a kind of load falling mode, uh, for sure is not really, you can do it. Okay, even with the current reactor, you can do it. There are reactors which are, but we can say whatever that is not in the in the nature of that technology. Okay, 
So in my view, from the technology viewpoint, uh, in my view, it would make sen more sense uh, to use uh, uh, nuclear power, for instance, in combination with hydropower, we keep, uh, or, or with non electric application, okay? It means uh, that uh, we, use, we, we keep the reactor at full power, and then if uh, there is uh, less demand, we do something else with that uh, extra production. For instance, pumping water in a reservoir. So that's that. But then, what, what happened? Then there are political considerations, or I don't know how to say, also economic considerations. In some part of the world, if not in the whole world, because this is true also in China, renewables are a reality. Okay? So of course, there are attempts to combine two different energy sources and to, to give some good elements so that it's worth to combine different energy sources for some performances, okay? Even if uh, the technology is not really designed for that purpose, okay? Anyway, in my view, there is still a lot to be understood on that, okay? For instance, this question of the coupling of uh, renewables with, uh, with uh, in particular, SMR, which should be, in principle, the best option to be coupled uh, with, uh, with uh, renewables, there is also how we we impact on the smart grid of the now considered for the, the, the renewables. Or how about the combi? I've seen a very interesting combination of energy storage, uh, 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 not only electric energy storage, etc., but now also storage the heat. Okay, All this different uh, uh, combination has still to be really understood. Okay, So let, in my view, it's a good option just because uh, Nuclear power is a reality. Renewables are more and more a, a reality. So it's worth it to take benefit of the reality, or to try to do And then to investigate all the possi possible scenarios. Okay? And then maybe we can find some good uh, reason okay, to, to use uh, uh, I mean, uh, different energy sources in, in, in combination. Also to address different needs of energy mix for the different countries. Okay? The countries are not the same, and you have different, and uh, even even the energy mix can be different uh, for different uh, countries. So, in terms of uh, deployment, uh, here is the situation with uh, SMR. At the moment, uh, there are only three SMR under construction. Actually, when we talk about the modular reactors, this is true only for uh, uh, CARM 25 in Argentina and HTR PM, PM the gas cooled reactor in 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 China. These are really modular reactors, even even from the conceptual uh, viewpoint. This is not the case of a KLP uh, 46, uh, which is not really a small modular reactor, but is a is an advanced small reactor also for non land based application. When you, and, and, and the, of course, they are under construction, so they are considered to, to, to go into operation in, in the next uh, uh, years. Um, and they are first of a kind. Uh, then there are a number of uh, concepts uh, which are uh, certified or at the advanced design stage, so ready to initiate the licensing uh, process. And if you see all of them, uh, well, uh, they have also introdu introduced this uh, for S, uh, Brest, and SVBR. I'm not very uh, convinced that they are in this situation. However, let's say that most of them are IPWR. Okay? So it means that for the near term deployment, uh, at least uh, our understanding is that uh, most of the I mean, SMR, which will be offered uh, by the vendors in coming years, uh, will be IPWR. Okay? At least, I mean, there should be a number of different IPWR offered, let's say, in the next 10 uh, years. For the first uh, time, uh, we have the voice of the female voice, so please. <laughs> with SMR, with respect yeah, to large, uh, is another challenge. It's not obvious. Uh, we are investigating on that uh, and also, of course, involving the regulators, okay? In principle, yes. In principle, yes. Because also, when you say the reactor is uh, shop fabricated, okay? What does it mean? Is that not, not only the, 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 the vendor can make all his uh, 
qualification process, not on site, in, in, in a workshop, but also the regulators that they have to go and, 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 and perform their, their, their uh, uh, task, they can do it in a, in a workshop. It could be much, uh, much efficient and also faster than on site. On site, of course, you can understand. By, by, by default, everything is more complicated. The other part is, as I said, one point is that is, is related to, to, to the technology, to the fact that uh, since they are small, they allow some uh, layout uh, which are not affordable for a large reactor, the integral of PWR. So of course, even in terms of safety performance, are expected to be, to be significantly better than the larger reactor. I was working on IRIS, the concept developed by Westinghouse, and the goal was to have 10 to, 10 to the minus 8 CDF, both for internal and external events. And the best at the moment is 10 to the minus 7 over, over AP1000. Also, the fact is that the reactor is simplified and is heavily based on uh, uh, passive safety system can help the licensing uh, uh, process. Okay? And, and, and last but not least, the reactor is small, so also the source term is small, is proportionally uh, small. So these are all elements which should favor the licensing process, speed up the license process. But do we have experience on that? No. What we are doing, uh, the IEA has created a forum <laughs> for regulators specifically for SMR. So they have asked the regulators to come to the, to, to the agency and try, first of all, to harmonize the safety criteria for, uh, for SMR. One of the things that we are doing is to revise the SSR 2 slash 1 in light of the SMR. So we, we can try to understand what are the criteria which are applicable uh, as, as they are. The, the, the criteria which are applicable with interpretation, you have to keep that, that you have to interpret in light of the fact that you have a different uh, technology. The criteria which are not applicable at all, and the, and the new criteria which may be introduced in the safety uh, standards because of the specific uh, technology. But we don't have experience of what the, the NRC of, or whatever will do with the, uh, the SMR. We try to favor the press process, but I mean, we don't have uh, still feedback, uh, I mean, on, on practical uh, reason. Now we have, sorry, in, we have a case in Latin America, and we have uh, very soon a case in the US, I mean, Karen in, in Argentina, and very soon uh, New Scale in, in the US, which have already initiated the licensing process, we will see the attitude of the regulator. A big issue is the human resources, okay? Whenever you propose an advanced reactor, it's not only a question to have uh, the right people, the right technology, blah, blah, blah. It's the fact that the regulator should be ready to license a, a, a reactor, which doesn't know very well. Okay, so there is a, a very big issue in having very skilled and prepared uh, human resources for regulators and TSO. Time is over, please. You skip your coffee break. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> please, please, go ahead. But, Yeah. Okay. Can, can I ask? Because I understand what you. The PSA of a of a, a single unit, the probability safety analysis for, or assessment for a single unit and multi unit is very different. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the point is very good uh, point. Yeah. Fukushima has demonstrated uh, that, uh, and the fact that you know PSA level one, level two, level three, uh, even the concept of level one, level two, and level three has to be reconsidered at the light of the multi unit. Sometimes also the multi-reactors, you have in the same site the multi-reactors. And the fact is that you combine a posteriori, the PSA of the single unit for a multi-unit doesn't work. From the, even from the mathematical viewpoint, is not correct. So thank you for the question, because we are just lancing a CRP in, in my section, which is the PSA for multi-unit and multi-reactor uh, reactors. There is something to be done, even from the theoretical uh, viewpoint. 
And we have seen in Fukushima that a level one in one of the reactor can affect the level two in, a, in another reactor, okay? Which was not considered uh, so far. So, yeah. 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 I fully agree with you. And we have to reconsider even the CDF in light of the fact that it's a multi-unit. Again, it's PSA. Uh, let me at least, uh, because I know that some of you already know the IPWR, but let me at least, before going to, to coffee break, to show you um, what does it mean an IPWR? Otherwise, we, if some of you still remain with this uh, doubt. Okay, so IPWR means that if you consider, we have two cases here of SMR, Smart South Korea, and uh, WAC SMR, which is uh, their replacement of my my baby, uh, um, which was Iris. So. Here is a typical uh, four-loop uh, uh, PWR, uh, in which you have uh, the reactor vessel, the steam generators, you have the, CR the uh, control roll uh, uh, device mechanism, um, what else, the pressurizer, pressurizer and the pumps. Okay? When we say IPWR, it means uh, that all these components go inside the primary vessel. So here you have the steam generator, here and uh, here. Okay. In, the, in the upper part, uh, you have the pressurizer, here and here. Of course, the vessel is larger. Because, uh, uh, with the same power, of course, the, 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 the vessel will be uh, uh, larger for the same power. And also, in some concept, also the pumps are inside, as well as uh, the CRDM. Okay. Of course, uh, to have a pump and uh, CRBM inside the vessel, there are a number of things to be addressed. There is also R&D ongoing, because you can imagine that you have uh, to operate uh, an electromagnetic uh, device under very harsh uh, conditions. So it's not, I mean, the fact is that we can arrange the steam generators and pump and the, pre and the pressurizer inside the vessel, I, I don't see major problem. There are still some therm, uh, Thermohydraulic issue to be, for instance, uh, normally the steam generators are of helicoidal type because they have to be uh, compact, and there is uh, still something to be qualified for the instability of two tubes, helicoidal uh, tube. Okay, the instability that can be generated when you have a, a number of uh, parallel spiral tubes uh, operating in the steam generators, but it's something which is, I mean in my view, uh, straightforward to address. The point of some mechanism like CRDM and other electrical things inside the reactor vessel, which operate at 15 megapascal and 300 degrees C is still uh, open issue. And there are supplier, in particular, Rolls Royce working on that. Uh, OK, so of course, uh, the result is this one, a much more compact uh, uh, layout of the prime and, and, and the other point is, of course, uh, that you practically eliminate the loca, the prime, the loca in, a, in the privacy because there is a no uh, a piping. Okay, all the I mean the only uh, tubes which comes out from the reactor vessel are secondary uh, loop. So in principle, you eliminate the loca in the primary uh, system. This, uh, these two are both modular because they are designed in order to be used in this configuration. Sorry, I'll show you in a moment. Um, here, like that, okay? So in, in batteries, okay? So they are, they are single unit, okay, of a certain uh, uh, power, that first of all, they are shop fabricated and transported to site in order to be. I think I don't know if you talk about I know about the like smart is not there. That's a very slight larger. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. For smart, uh, oh, maybe yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. remember. Uh, example, example. Uh -huh. so, uh, the other thing that modularity, uh, because it's sometimes used and misleading, uh, 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 what's the meaning of modularity? Uh, in this case of smart, you can have multiple. Yeah. Okay, but it's like that the actual you have, can have many. Same yeah, it's the same size, like so Fukushima. There's, there's no modularity. Yeah. Okay, it's not like you said, you have one single room. Yeah. Control room. Yeah. Control room with many. That's the, well, it's part of the modular. But in principle, when you have a series of, of a reactor which are operated simultaneously and with the same staff of operators, of course, you have modular. With smart, it's true. It's not, it's not the, the case. Your question? During the coffee break, uh, because otherwise, really, we cannot uh, talk about the rest. It's already at 3 a.m. OK, thank you. I think we'll break here now for coffee, and quickly uh, we'll come back at 3.15. 3.15. After me, there is another presentation. Yeah, fine. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I will, I will go faster. Again, I try to, I mean, because, uh, you Today know. Today we have little time, uh,